Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products, and on today's video, we're going to be cutting some of these logs up into nice big beams with a chainsaw mill. And we'll take a look at the length. This is the short one, and it's not quite 10 feet. So these logs have been sitting for about six months, and they've been sitting in the dirt, and they've got a bunch of dirt in the, on the bark here, so I'm going to try and uh, debark at least the the, uh, about a third of this log here. Try and get a lot of that dirt out of there so we don't ruin our chain. Um, so let me get this debarked. I'm just going to use a shovel, just a, a pointed shovel, and just try and scrape it off of there and see how it goes. All right, well, never mind. Abort. <laughs> Abort. It, uh, it's just too, especially these big knots, it's too much of a pain to get this cleaned up. And then I was flopping a bunch of dirt down onto the tree anyway. So I'm just going to try and orient it so... My cut stays, you know, about here and about here on the log. Um, try and keep all that dirt on the top on that slab we're going to make. Uh, and then, you know, if we have to, we can resharpen our chain. It only takes a couple minutes. Um, so let's get set up here. I'm going to buck these ends nice and flat and smooth. This one's got a little junk in the end, so is the other one. So I'll get these bucked nice and smooth and flat, and then I'll show you how to set my log up. Okay, so here's the tools that I use uh, to set up for my beams. I, I've made these jigs here, and I can take these jigs and uh, get a nice square uh, dimension on the end of the log. I'll show you that in a minute. Here's a couple of holders that will screw into the end of the log, hold the rails so I can get a nice, smooth, straight cut, a level, a Sharpie, and then just a little screwdriver there drive in some screws. So um, I'll get the camera set up and you guys can watch how I do this. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this. So here's the small end of our log. It's a little bit of a goofy shape, um, but I take my my jigs here and this is a jig that's going to make me a six by six beam. Um, I tried for, a, for an eight by eight, but it just hangs out a little bit too much on three or four corners. So I can't make that one work. So I'll get my six by six up here, get it kind of where I want it. Take my Sharpie. And so there's our six by six beam. You really want to get this part right because all your other cuts are going to be based off this being nice and right where you want it and square. All right, so that's what it looks like. And actually, I've made up four of these plates. I've never tried this before, um, but I'm going to I'm going to put the bottom one on too. And so I can set up once, cut two slabs off, and then set up again and cut the other two slabs off. So I don't have to set up four different times. I'm here, I might as well set up uh, for both top and bottom cut. All right, now here's probably the trickiest part of the whole thing is, got a little level on there, we got it level. And so now I'm gonna go down to the other side and when I draw my square, I got to take the level and make sure the top of that is level and I can place this anywhere inside that round I need. Let's go down to the other side and take a look. All right, here's our big side. And now because it's big, I can place this kind of anywhere in here that I need to, to get the best uh, cut. And so I'm going to put it right about there. And now I need to put the level across the top. All right, so now I got the level on there. Oh, wrong way. Got to get the level in the right spot. And now I can draw my line and the top of uh, this is now parallel with the top of that one and we'll get a nice straight flat cut. All right, we got our little jig set up here. Got our rails running down the, the top. They're sitting down there. I had to trim off a few of the knots poking up so I get the clearance for my rails. Uh, but now we're all set up on our log and the old saying, measure twice, cut once, from here to here is seven and an eighth, 
seven and eight, everything's level and level. Um, and same on the other side. So hopefully we can get a pretty darn square beam out of this thing. Um, but now let's take our chainsaw over. We'll get her set up in our mill and uh, get it adjusted so we can cut our log here. Okay, so we got our little chainsaw mill over here and we have our chainsaw and the bar just slides in between that clamp and that clamp and gets clamped down. Let's see if I can do this on video here so you guys can see it. So we got our bar in there and that clamp. And I get, get it adjusted here so it's pinching on the bar. On the bar, so now I can tighten these down, get the bar clamped in, and then we can adjust this for height. Alright, I'll try and show you this one-handed here, but I got our I got our jig all set up. And I know that when my Mill is set up for six and three eighths. I'm gonna cut a six by six true dimension timber, and I want to stay about a half inch or three eighths of an inch off that steel plate. Cause the last thing I want to do is have my saw tweak or something and catch that plate. So that's why I got a little bit of space on uh, the top side there. So now we'll get the get the saw fired up and we'll start our, our first cut in this thing. Okay guys, here's our first cut. We'll take a look down. That looks pretty good. The finish is pretty darn good. That chain isn't the sharpest, but I think that's a pretty darn good finish. Cedar is really, really soft, um, so it cuts pretty easy. And uh, a couple of tricks I've learned, I'm certainly not an expert. I haven't milled, you know, thousands and thousands of board feet, but um, when using these chainsaw mills, uh, a sharp chain is always good, but uh, don't, for, to, get, to get the best finish, don't stop and start. You know, may have noticed I didn't put any wedges in. Um, I just try and stay as even and straight as possible and uh, don't push real hard. Just let the saw do the work some of these knots can cause a little bit of problems just because of the change in the grain and the hardness. The, the limbs are a lot harder. Um, but just, just you know, push nice and even. If it slows down a little bit, let it slow down. When you get back into the clear wood, it speeds up. Uh, but that's how I get this really nice finish. And I didn't stop and put any wedges in. And you noticed I, as I came out, I, I pushed the, the bar all the way out past the wood. Because if you, if you push it this far and stop, it sometimes tips and um, it'll gouge the wood on the top or the bottom, um, but I have a nice finish all the way to the edge, both on the start and finish. And then here's the top slab. I don't know. I'm expecting we'll get at least one or maybe two boards out of the top. I like to take my slabs and cut one inch thick boards. 
all the way down live edge and then I can trim them up but um, so that's the that's the hard part now we'll roll the log all the way over and do the same thing on uh, the, the current bottom of this log and then we'll just reset our our, our jigs here on the sides and do the sides and we'll get our beam um, by far and away the the most time it takes to set up uh, the first cut and to get your mill attached and, and adjusted in height. But now that we're all set up and adjusted, I, I'm, I mean, I can really bang out the, the beams here. So um, let me get this rolled over and we'll do our next cut. All right, well guys, I spoke too soon. I wasn't even paying attention to this until I got it rolled over, but my jig is not big enough. So I'm just gonna take the jig off, take the chainsaw out of the mill, and I'm just gonna freehand cut off a slab starting about here, right in front of those knots and just come straight across and see if I can take off a inch or so to get my steel tubing in there. Um, so I actually, I made these, these steel jigs for some smaller wood. And so what I'm gonna have to do is for some of these bigger beams, you know, eight by eights and, and bigger, um, I'll probably make another set and I'll make them probably another three or four inches taller and three or four inches wider um and that way we can get it get up and away from all this stuff this this cedar it's <laughs> people kind of say the cedar grows like a carrot you know it's it has a lot of taper to it especially when you get big knot whorls in it branch whorls um so unfortunately on this one i'll have to spend a little bit extra time and just take off about an inch but then i can just screw it right back into our same holes and and keep going all right, guys, that wasn't too big of a deal. A little bit of an inconvenience, but I got it. So it's free all the way across there. They're sitting down in their notches now, the tube is. So we'll get the saw up here and we'll make our next cut. Okay guys, we're gonna try and outsmart this tree here because I've got the same thing going on where my jig doesn't give me enough clearance to run my my um, tube all the way down. So I'm gonna come up an inch and cut the top slab off. Hopefully that'll give me enough clearance both in the top and the bottom. And then I'll just move it down to the next line. And so the, the cut that gives us the finished beam will also give us a one inch board. Um, and then I should still have enough, maybe I, I think the other end has enough meat on it to give us another one inch board out of the slab. Um, and the other thing that I've noticed here, since I did the top and the bottom, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have, you know, out of this rim here, I'm going to have wide live edge slabs, probably two of them, um, on both ends. And then this one, I'm going to get some six inch boards out of it, two and two. So if you would rather get, um, 
uh, more wide boards, cut one slab off, and then this one can come all the way across, and that one can come all the way across, and you'll end up with one six inch board. So uh, there's lots of ways to skin this cat, but uh, I'm just showing you kind of the way I'm doing it. All right, here is our beam after that first cut. And actually, you know, executive decision here, I'm just gonna keep it as a six by eight. So it's six this way, eight inches that way. All right, so we'll check our dimensions here. Oh, there's a six on the money. There's a, just a shy, that's yeah, about six on the money. A little hard to do with one hand to focus the camera and everything. Now let's see, this dimension is a strong eight and a strong eight. Eight on the money, right there close. That one's a little strong. But pretty much for rough cut lumber, looking down the, I mean, it's pretty flat both ways. So it cut nice and square. Nice big six by eight. Now, looking at our rem pieces, these two I could get a one by two out of, one by two and a half, and a one by three, which I'm, I'm probably not gonna chase. Those are probably just gonna be scrap. This one I can get a nice one by six and a half out of, and this one as well, one by six and a half. And then uh, the little bit, I'm gonna take about three eighths or half inch for a kerf out of this when I cut across the top. So the, the waste on both the top of these are gonna be um, not enough to get anything out of. So I'll, uh, I'll get set up to cut some one inch boards and we'll, we'll slab out that one and that one. And uh, we'll see what we get with those two. But when I set this up, I won't talk you through the whole thing, but when I set this up, I can use this nice surface now. I don't need to use my guides. I can use this flat surface to run my my mill down and so it's it's real easy i just adjust the mill to one inch thick and then uh, put that thing so the nice flat sl flat face is up and just run it down and cut my board all right guys well i actually did two slabs off of there here's the the top one uh that was the one by six and a half and it's live edge so i can get you know a little bit more that's probably actually a one by eight or plus um live edge and then I went ahead and took another slab out of the the you know the waste where we, we didn't even we couldn't even get an inch out of here, um, but because this is a roughly nine and a half foot log, I can take a foot and a half out of it, come back here, and actually get a pretty nice eight foot board out of it. Um, again, live edge, but you know I got four or five inches I could rip out if I wanted to make a board um, and take the live edge off. And then this is actually just the waste. I can't I can't get. There's not a there's not a one inch thick anything in there, um, so I can't even get another board out of this. So this will just be waste. But um, we got a couple nice boards out of this that one piece. So let's we'll do the same thing on this one. I'll I'll take at least two cuts on this rim and uh, see what we got. And then actually while we're at it, it's set up. It's super easy. I'll I'll take a cut out of each one of these and see what we get too. All right, guys, we got it all milled up here. So what we got is we got our six by eight true dimension beam there. We've got several different live edge slabs here um, that are probably if you made them into, into straight boards, you get a one by six to one by eight out of them. A couple more over here. And then we've got um, a couple one by sixes here. And some of them right at the end have a little bit of a the, the round of the the tree on them still that one underneath is pretty good still um, but
But yeah, that is, we made lots of good wood out of that one log. Here is the waste from that. Pretty much just these four slabs is most of it. This one, I might have been able to get another board out of, but man, it, it's, it's pretty thin. And there are spots, you know, like here where it's, I don't even think I can get a one inch all the way across there. So um, it's just, it's just not quite, quite enough meat there to get another board out of. So, uh, but I could, I mean, that's, that's hardly anything and it'll make some good firewood or kindling or something. Um, so there you go. There is our first log. This video is getting pretty long, so I think I'll, I'll cut it off here. We'll have to wait for another video for those other logs. Um, and just for your reference, I used about a tank and a half of gas, saw gas, to run these. And my improvement that I'm going to make is on these steel guides, guide tubes, um, I'm going to take them back to the steel shop and, and about every six inches or so, I'm going to put just a little tack, a little bead, all the way down. Because um, there were a few times where they started to slide with the chainsaw mill. So I'm going to make just a little nub there so it'll catch on the inside edge of this plate. And these plates are actually um, perfect for smaller diameter stuff. Uh, probably 10 inch diameter and under. I'm going to make another set that's uh, about 3 or 4 inches taller and maybe 2 inches wider. So the the tubes can can spread out a little bit more. I get a little wider um, rail system to run the saw on. I don't want to make it too wide because if I make it really really wide, um, the the end plates stick out. If the tree is is you know pretty skinny, I don't have a lot of meat. They stick out, and then I'm fighting to get around them um, with the with the edge of the mill. So um, I'm going to make them like I say, three or four inches. Another set, three or four inches taller, and maybe an inch wider on each side. Um, just so I can get that height to get over those knots and, and that butt swell in the cedar. So um, Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.